Another episode of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking the last bottle of this year's Mad Mad Marzen Oktoberfest yes. beer. Today we're going to bring to you a request by Calvin. Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. We know that this is not a forgotten horror film. It's actually one of the more... Well-known well known fan favorites of the whole Nightmare on Elm Street series. So for that reason, we've decided to put it through the trash or treasure paces. <laughs> this movie's directed by Chuck Russell, and he's done quite a few high-profile movies. The Blob remake, The Mask with Jim Carrey, yeah. which you can see how that ties into this movie, being very cartoony, right? right yeah. Patricia Arquette stars in this. She was in Lost Highway and The Stigmata. Larry Fishburne is in this, a very young Lawrence Fishburne. Heather Langenkamp is in this, reprising her role as Nancy. We're gonna go through this plot short and simple. Dream Warriors starts off with a group of kids who have all been admitted to a psychiatric ward in this hospital. They're all having nightmares about a man trying to kill them in their sleep. Each one of them has like a kind of different backstory and we hear about it through the group therapy. Dr. Gordon's overseeing these group of kids. There's a new intern who's gonna start and it ends up being Nancy. Nancy's all grown up now. She's gone through university and she's now an intern therapist which makes sense yeah. from what happened to her in the first movie. By listening to what the kids have to say in their group therapy, their description of their dreams, she starts to realize maybe it's not over. Maybe Freddy is back. After a tragic death that happens at the hospital when a kid assumingly commits suicide by jumping off this bell tower, realizes that her worst fears are coming true. There's this nun that's walking the grounds. Dr. Gordon goes up to her. He eventually learns that in order to stop Freddy once and for all, you have to bury his bones on hallowed ground. Dr. Gordon seeks out Nancy's dad to find out where his bones are buried. That's... Only one man knows. <laughs> well, what about everyone else who was involved there? Well, they're all dead now, I guess. <laughs> Turns out that Freddy's bones are actually buried in a junkyard. And they're still there and everything. <laughs> After like... all these years, that car's <laughs> never been demolished or used for scrap or anything. <laughs> Meanwhile, the kids and Nancy are forming a plot to actually go to sleep together, which is the opposite of what they've been trying to do the whole movie, right? Yeah. They're trying to stay awake. And they're going to use the dream to actually create powers for themselves and be able to fight Freddy. Hence the Dream Warriors. Exactly. If you haven't watched Dream Warriors, of course, watch the movie to find out how it ends. But first, is it trash or treasure? <laughs> well, that's going to lead us to the treasure first. Be kind first. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be assholes after. <laughs> the first thing we have to mention are the effects. They're, they're actually very good. They're top-notch, really. Yeah, you can't get me better than the production quality of this movie. It looks fucking great. The sets are amazing. They're practical effects too, yeah. right? It's 1987. There's a few like examples, like there's that one puppet death, right? Yeah. Where all those tendons come out of the kid's arms. Just before that though, those marionette dolls turning yeah. into Freddy and there's all that kind of claymation stop, stop motion, motion yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really good. The plot for this movie and the way that the whole story progresses from the first one is really good actually. It makes yeah. sense. Like the fact that Nancy is now older and grown up. First of all, to be a therapist, which makes sense after what happened to her in the first one. And she's the one going after Freddy now. All of these kids are kids of the parents that killed Freddy. One thing that doesn't make sense is none of these parents put two and two together. <laughs> all of our kids? Yeah. They were, you know, all of us? They're all crazy and in the, the hospital? Hmm, I wonder why. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Nobody seems to put it together. And the characters are actually pretty good in this, you know? They're not overdone. There's a little bit of comedy. They're all memorable characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all individual. Out of the whole series, I think it's the best ensemble cast of characters. And not just the Nightmare franchise, but I think compared to other franchises. I've always really liked Kincaid. He works so well in this movie and then you see so many other slashers and horror movies kind of try to replicate 
that character. That'll bring us to the trash of this movie. This movie is the crossroads of the whole franchise. You can see it and you can feel where it took the turn. Where it stops being a horror movie. Yeah. And becomes MTV. Exactly. And you can see that they're trying to create a franchise that will continue yeah. on and on and will just make the company money. And they succeeded. They did. Very well in doing that. But because of that, the quality of the movies and the scariness of the movies, this one included, and everything that came after suffered so yeah, bad. It took a huge nosedive. As soon as I hear that, welcome to primetime, bitch, <laughs> for me it's like, that's it. Freddy is no longer scary. That is a moment in movie history where the character changes. He's right. no longer the guy in the shadows. He's just a funny one-liner villain who you can't even really take seriously anymore, Exactly. Right? Well, even that kill, like he's in the TV with those robotic yeah. arms and grabs her head and puts it into the TV. It's like, that's shitty. Everything about that is so <laughs> silly. It's the complete turning point. Yeah. Like, you know, the movie is kind of creepy up to that point even. Like, the, the dreams are kind of creepy and... You still hear the nursery rhymes. And it's got some creepiness. Then Welcome to Primetime, bitch, happens. It's like, okay. Here we go. Now it's all funny mm -hmm. and it's it's not horror anymore. It took all the ambiguity out of him. What we dislike about the movie the most is the way it treats Freddy and how it shaped everything afterwards. Exactly, yeah. And also the fact that they don't have any reference to the second movie in this at all, right? Not even in passing. Not no, even nothing. just a quick little, just give it something. Give yeah. it a little, like a sentence or something. They could know? have had that Jesse was staying at the same hospital. Yeah. Or, or something. I think number two <laughs> did very well at the box office, but the reviews weren't good. Right. And that was the issue. So they're probably trying to distance themselves from part two as much as possible. The tone of the movie is completely the opposite of part two. And part two is dark dark and scary and this one is not dark and scary it's bright and colorful and funny <laughs> another piece of trash in this is the whole freddy myth they start to build and again just like michael myers you can't give too much backstory to this because it, it starts to become silly and not scary anymore. Mm -hmm. You start reaching too much. Mother was this nun who was left alone in a insane asylum and is raped by a thousand maniacs and he's the bastard son of a thousand maniacs. Like, what, what, what does that have to yeah, do with well, anything? Well, why? 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 Like, that doesn't... Whatever. Like, what really boils down to it, it was he was an awful person who killed children. Exactly. That's the backstory. That's all you need to know. Yeah. He all disappears out of the dream, yeah. and his bones all come back to life, and he's all fighting that doctor. Yeah, like, what Look. the hell? Like, I thought he was... A... <laughs> Why didn't his bones come back to life earlier and just, like, move himself away yeah. so he couldn't be buried? Yeah, after. and go get a hotel somewhere and, like, <laughs> hang out and live a nice life. Another piece of trash in this movie, and we might get shunned for this, a yeah. lot of people might give us shit, is Heather Langenkamp. I've never liked her as a final girl. I thought she was okay in Nightmare on Elm Street. And I find her really weak in this movie. Like, I get no sense of real urgency from her. She just seems like she's phoning it in. But also, just her acting abilities, too, are pretty weak. Oh, God. And they were in the first one, too. Yeah, I've never really got the appeal of her being all oh, this great final girl, this great leading woman. No, I, no she's really. kind of just... She's always been, like, perpetually aloof. Oh, God. The dream warrior aspect of this movie, I think, is a little lost here, too. <laughs> and misleading. <laughs> yeah, very misleading. You'd think from the way they set the movie up, we're gonna have a good showdown here. Yeah. They're gonna create good personas for themselves that are really gonna kick Freddy's ass. That's what's gonna end the movie. They don't even really do that. Every character that they create in the dream world is fucking weak as hell. Well, and they, and they die. Yeah. 
The whole point of that was they're gonna go into the dream together and fight Freddy together. And kill him! But they don't! They fight him one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. It's supposed to be a team effort. It should have been all of them against Freddy at once. Exactly. Just kicking the shit out of him. And then it turns out that that doesn't even matter. It's the doctor who has to dig up his bones yeah. in real life and bury them. So why are the kids even bothering? Why didn't he just go back and tell the kids, Hey, listen, don't even go to sleep for maybe a couple of hours. <laughs> yeah. I'll get the bones yeah. and we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll be call done it quits. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. End of the movie. Well, the reason they go to sleep <laughs> is to save Patricia Arquette's character, who is now, she's been sedated, right? So she's at Freddy's mercy. But what, you know, yeah, I know what you mean. Whatever, yeah. like, yeah. you know. I guess we should mention the Dokken song, Dream Warriors. <laughs> it's pretty good. It does kind of add to the hokiness of the movie a little bit, right? Exactly, because it's MTV. Trash or treasure, Dream Warriors. Drum roll, it's trash. I'm gonna say it is trash too. And it's not because it's a bad movie per se, it's entertaining. Yep. I, you know, I have fun watching Dream Warriors, but I have almost just as much problem with it as I do that I'm having fun with it. If you want a true horror movie, well then uh, I'm not gonna watch this for wanting a true horror. My biggest problem is the way it took the direction of the whole franchise. The art, you know, of the movie suffered due to just wanting to make big box office money and make Freddy a household name and exactly, a yeah. MTV icon. Because of what they did with this movie, it split people, yeah. right? There's there's two camps. Yeah. Rather than there should just be one with everybody saying, oh man, that was an awesome movie. Broad strokes, it works, but as a horror movie fan and someone who like really likes what the first and second movie did, uh, this movie just like it took it in the wrong direction. <laughs> exactly. So don't hate us and don't unsubscribe <laughs> to our channel because we're not huge fans of uh, Dream Warriors. So let us know what you think of Dream Warriors, Trash, Treasure, or somewhere in between. But if you have to choose one, you let us know. And until next time, keep drinking. <laughs>